This is episode five of Innovating Education, featuring Evelina Merlo, president of the executive committee of the Ecole Isoko La Source. I truly believe that innovation is first and foremost human. Innovation is first and foremost stories and storytellers. The concept of this podcast is actually to bring you innovators and people who are changing the world of education, presenting you inspiring stories and inspiring people. When I decided to start this podcast, I actually reached out to different people to interview. I started with friends and network, and today's guest uh, was the first one to accept. She's actually a dear friend of mine. Her name is Evelina Merlo, an amazing educator from Rwanda. And this interview is special, as I say, because it was my first interview that I've produced. In this conversation, we explored how our stories, value, and passion can lead to change and transformation in education. Her story is the perfect example of why we need to be artists and entrepreneurs to impact education and make change. I'm a firm believer that teaching is not just about the content, but it's also a lot about connecting to who we are. And Evelina is a great illustration of that. Evelina is from Giseni in the Rubaru district of Rwanda. She was born in Rwanda between the volcanoes and the Lake Kivu. She grew up between multiple cultures and lineages. As a young girl, she was full of imagination and creativity. Later on, she decided to pursue management studies and then artistic studies. Art is an important part of her life. She believes it's also the foundation of all cultures and civilization. In 2015, she wrote a book series called Mémoires d'un autre temps, which means memories from a different time. She wrote it in collaboration with her mother, Nicole, who, as you will hear in this interview, is a true Rwandan hero. She's actually nicknamed the Schindler of Rwanda. She saved thousands of lives during the genocide. Witnessing the horror of the genocide had a profound impact on Evelina's childhood. It definitely impacted her view on inclusion and togetherness. Evelina is a daughter, a mother, an artist, an entrepreneur, and an educator. Seven years ago, she decided to embark on a leadership journey to become the president of the executive committee of the Ecole Isoko de Source. She sees that opportunity to implement a vision and lead transformation. The school is located in an international and multicultural environment, being situated a few meters from the borders with the Democratic Republic of Congo. Its richness is to have a mix of children from the region and elsewhere. The school welcomes children from two and a half to 11 years old, without any distinction of sex, language, religion, and culture. The Asoko School aims for the development of each student through the free expression of their thoughts and the development of self-confidence with respect for themselves and others. The main values of the school are autonomy and active participation, creativity, excellence, discipline, and respect. Since its creation, Isoko has been socially involved in the region by using part of its funds to pay the mutual health insurance scheme to children from more disadvantaged communities. Find out more about Isoko by visiting their website www.ecoleisoko.com Evelina, welcome, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> Hi everyone. Hello, hello. Nice to be there. I'm so happy. 
<laughs> so Evelina, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, first, uh, I would like to start for the audience to understand also where is your love for education uh, uh, starting. Can you tell us what is your first or your first memory about school? Uh, my first memories are in uh, Italia. <clears throat> I was in um, um, Guardian in nursery, and uh, actually, I was yes, uh, I was someone a little bit different because um, there we had to sleep in the day, and I was like, no, no way, <laughs> I'm not sleeping. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was the only one always busy with playing and doing something else and the other were sleeping so uh, that's actually what's come always in my mind when i'm thinking about uh, nursery mm -hmm. as i understand evelina um your story and the choice that you've made to actually fund and create a school is very influenced by your story um your life story and the story with your mom can you a uh, little bit uh Describe us uh, your childhood and uh, the link with your mom and uh, art and how was that an inspiration for you to uh, go into the education? Uh, first of all, uh, I would like just to, to make a, a little um, a correction. Day School was founded by um, Maria, Maria Lange. Uh, she was here with uh, her children and uh, other Um, expats and they they were looking for a school and actually they just create this school because they needed a school with a a, a good uh, level for their, their children so i enter in that school in uh, 2017 something like that so i was uh, elected president And that, that's how I begin with this school. But at that moment, this school was more like, um, uh, uh, how do you say that? A correspondence? Yes, a distance uh, school. Yes, distance yeah. school uh, with the French. And I, I was, actually when I get in, I was not really happy about that because in my childhood, I had a Belgium school here And we had teacher coming from Belgium and the level was really high because when I left here to go in Belgium, my level was really high in comparison with uh, the others. Um, what happens, I, I didn't really like to go to school. Um, for me, school was just like painful, really. Until uh, I found out a new teacher coming. His name is uh, Etienne Cruz. At that moment, really, I began to like school because he was um, singing, he was playing. Actually, school begins to have another level, another interest. It was really something new and something so... Um, refreshing so uh, at that moment after some days my mother became the president of that school and she was taking care of all uh, the school for uh, for the um, expats um, what I have to say also is my mother uh, has had only me for a child and she was Actually, when she was young, she was really, she was in love with children and she wanted 12 children. She had in her mind, I have to get 12 children. Okay. But yes, the life is like, she <laughs> is like that. And she had only one children and I only one child and it's me. So um, she had, she, um, recueillir. She she collected. She collected, yeah, uh, children uh, from uh, in the region. Most of all, were children that the mother died, just uh, giving Orphans. birth, or yeah. 
So they were not orphans. Uh, most of most of the time they had their father, but the father was was like I don't know how to raise this this child. Um, and so there was there was um, asking how to do uh, to to raise the this, this, the child, and she was taking all the children to let them grow and pay the school. And my mother, when she was young, didn't go to school. She had uh, only uh, the, the first and the second um, primary, and she stopped there. And she, it was so painful for her because she wanted so much to go at school, but her father said it's not useful for a girl to go to, uh, to school. So she had to go to the farm and uh, to, to work to the farm uh, with her father. And it stayed like really, really painful for her. It was, it was really painful. It was really painful for her to, to, to have that experience. And somehow she wanted to for her, it was a way to 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 kind of uh, heal that wound uh, by participating and uh, by contributing to education of uh, the children in Rwanda. Yeah, that was actually for her something really, really important. Is the education was really uh, because she didn't get it, and she begins to read a lot, and because she read, she had a really good. Um, uh, autograph and uh, she she loved she loved uh, talking, uh, reading, uh, writing because she write also two books two really big book books about the life of my father and then about her own life and um, actually that's really that's the 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 the, the way she grew up she grew up with the books because she didn't go at school, so she was learning where she could. And when she began to be the, the president of this school, she was so proud of herself because she said, okay, I didn't go at school, but I'm the president of the school. See, it's something <laughs> really, it was, yeah, it was really, she was so proud of herself. And okay, the, the, the experience was not so easy for her, because she had to, to manage uh, people um, from Europe. And she was not used to that because <laughs> um, <laughs> sometimes those, the, 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 the tradition are not the same in Europe or here in Africa. Uh, here in Africa, we talk and we do things in one way. And Europe, people are talking and <laughs> saying things uh, without having, uh, without fear. Can we say like this? So, um, yeah, it was a little bit hard, but uh, okay, she, 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 was, she was managing how she could. And um, because of her, the school had a big uh, benefit because actually she, she was a good um, manager. Uh, she was really looking for the the houses, the less expensive uh, ex expensive houses. Yeah, and um, uh, the teachers were coming from Belgium, but she was um, managing to to get a good um, um, not to pay too much. Too much. You see? So it was affordable yeah. for people to come. Yeah, Sisa, and um, actually that's. That makes the school really big because of her. After a while, she was too busy and she left that. But when I had the possibility, the, 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 this opportunity to, to be president myself, I said, that, that's something important to do. I need to see how it is. <laughs> I, I need to, to learn. <laughs> and actually, I, I just myself in that um, yes in that thing and it was really refreshing 
and also a little bit stressing because I, I, I didn't study pedagogy. Actually, I'm, I'm studying still till now. I, and the, the good thing is I called my teacher. I called back my teacher, Etienne Cruz, because for me, it's the reference. See? So when I call him, I talk with him about the school and what I want to do. Uh, this school was just correspondence, you know, just, it was really, the level was so, 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 um, trop bas. Low? <laughs> too, too, too low. Too, yes, too low. And so, um, I said, no, I, I really need to get to, to rebuild the Belgium school that we had here. Really, uh, I, that's something I, I wanted. To rebuild it. And that's, that's the yeah. story? Wow, that's, uh, that's quite inspiring. Hi, everyone. Thank you for being part of this journey. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm just getting started with this podcast, and you leaving me a review helps a lot. Make sure you join the Facebook group to continue this conversation and discover exclusive content. Subscribe to the newsletter to find out more about the episodes and the guests. You know, you know, I say, oh. Um, going back to your childhood, and uh, I think this school is very rooted from... Uh, I had the privilege to actually visit it uh, when I was in Rwanda, and I was very impacted by um, the family, the atmosphere, and the spirit, and uh, and the children are, are amazing, and you can really tell that they are growing in um, personal, that there is this personal growth happening with the children, and uh, it's, it's wonderful to see. Um, I see there's a lot of your story and your personality of your family also into this. Um, going back to your childhood, and you talk about your mom, your father, um, and then we know the history of Rwanda. What I would like to know a little bit more is uh, how did the the, the, the conflict uh, that happened uh, impacted uh, your vision um, and, uh, and the vision of your mom, because you have quite an amazing story. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> okay, my mother, if she writes those books, it was also to, to tell the story about the, what happened here in Rwanda. Uh, actually, when it began, I was here. And uh, we begin to see people running in the, in the street with a, a machete. And uh, they were trying to kill people. And it begins to be really, really... Uh, hot, <laughs> but it was also uh, already in um, 91, like this. So my mother just sent me in Europe to finish my studies and she stayed here. She stayed here and <clears throat> actually she helped a lot of people. Uh, she was really sensitive about what happened and um, we, we had a, a big uh, farm in Masisi, in Congo. Um, actually, we, we, we were living in Congo. And um, what, when this happened, um, the, 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 the genocide was not only in Rwanda. It goes till uh, Congo also. Yeah, most people don't so, actually know that the, the genocide was also in Congo. So I think it's, it's yeah, great. because... In Congo, in Masisi, there are so pe those people, um, Bagogwe, the, those are actually Tutsis, and um, they were also in danger. So my mother sent um, trucks to bring them back here in Rwanda. So they, because actually when the genocide finished here, the all uh, Interamwe went in outside. See, when the, the, the land was back to, yes. And when they go back, when they go in outside, they came in uh, Masisi. And that's where everything just blow. Uh, they tried to kill people and all our cows. We had like uh, 8,000, no, 8, and, uh, we mean 8,000. 8, 8,000 uh, cows and 300 horses. We had 
plenty of um, animals and they killed all the animals. Nothing is left. Nothing. So when they came and they began to kill people, uh, she sent trucks to bring back those uh, bagogues and to bring them back here in Rwanda. So she saved like many, many, many of them. I, I will send you um, an interview that she got, uh, yes, about what she did. Um, She's a hero. They called her, the, yeah, she called, they called her the Schindler of, <laughs> of that period, you know. Yes, yeah, she, she saved many people. She was really, uh, she was not happy what, what happened, actually, yeah. And your mom was, uh, because, uh, your mom was from Belgium, right? Yeah, but she's born here. She was born here. She was okay. born here. And actually, that's only the, 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 the outside was white, but her heart uh, was not. Was yeah. <laughs> that's Afro. why her book, yeah, her book uh, is called Muroronquere. That means the, the, the color of the soul. Because uh, she, w she was not feeling white. She was feeling like uh, Randy's. And even if she was sleeping, she was sleeping and uh, dreaming in Kinyarwanda. Yeah, she was really amazing. So you grew and up really, she... you grew up as a, you really, she really uh, put that, uh, that Rwandan African uh, thing into you. So you really... Yeah, she was she was Rwandese. She didn't she didn't feel like uh, white people. Like an expat. She she was yeah. talking yeah she was talking eight languages, but for her the 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 first language was Kinyarwanda. Kinyarwanda, which is the, the yeah. official language of from Rwanda. yes Rwanda and also Masisi. And Masisi. Yeah, okay. so that's where she grew up. She grew up like uh, someone from there. She was. She was afraid about about to see a, a white 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 person. <laughs> she didn't see her color really. When she saw a, a white person, she was hiding. She was, ah, oh, he's going to kill me. He's he going to eat me. You know, because here in Rwanda, sometimes in the, um, you know, really far inside, uh, the the mother when, you know, in the, in in Europe they say yeah, the green she's going to come and. If you're not good ch children, yeah, <laughs> White you know, and, <laughs> yeah, and in Masisi they don't say Grinch; they say the white people is going <laughs> is going to come and is going to eat you. Wow. And so she was really <laughs> with her; <laughs> she was really sure that she was not white. And when she she see a white person, she was like hiding and really afraid. <laughs> so yeah, it was happy. It was really funny to hear her about that. <laughs> uh, that's a beautiful yeah. story i remember being there and uh you telling me about the story of your mom already and uh i, I, I was i was amazed by by that story um how do you think this 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 childhood and and the fact that you had to leave the country and then come back how did it drive you in a way um first i think you have a deep connection with art as an artist so it's a big part of your mm -hmm. life and it's be a big part mm -hmm. of your project but mm -hmm. how this story drove you to now contribute in education and the legacy of, yeah. of that story as I, as i told you i i was not really a happy child at school so when i i i, I find out that some some teacher were better than others and i was like i'm someone who analyze a lot what i'm seeing so many times i will do like my theories in my head you know i would be like you know i'm the kind of person when you say your name i will be uh, oh yes i know People with that name are like this, you know, <laughs> <laughs> because I'm I'm doing my own theories. So it's true. <laughs> actually, it was <laughs> it's a little bit that. So um, when I saw that school is not so funny, uh, I stayed a little bit with that. I 
I really begin to, to like the, the school with that teacher. And after a while, also when I begin to do what I wanted, you know, uh, when I begin art school. And I begin art school because we lost everything here. At the beginning, I had to do um, uh, uh, agroeconomy. Agricultural so, economy? Yeah, that was actually the plan. Oh, the wow. plan with my mother. Um, because, yeah, we had a, a farm. I had to take it. So I'm the only child. There is no choice. <laughs> <laughs> so when, when we lose everything, it was like uh, freedom. She just tell me, okay, Evelina, do whatever you want. Because actually, we don't have anything any left. So. And she was so depressed. So um, I said, okay, well, I'm doing what I really like. It's hard. I really like to grow and to, to make things with my hands. And that's how I begin to do that way. And um, when everything came together is when they asked me to take this school and they said, okay, that's a good opportunity to also use my creativity. See, um, I, I begin, before being president, I was teaching at that school and I found out there is no art teacher in Rwanda. There is one school, art school in all Rwanda. It's here in Yondo. But I've been there many times and I was like uh, really sad about what happened there because actually there is nothing. Uh, they have teachers, but the teacher were uh, students from before. So actually the, the, the creativity was also um, not really open you know they there were some children really really creative okay when you see the study of one piece of art it was really interesting but after a while uh, this study just disappeared and you see something really uh, like a, a, a uniform everybody is doing the same thing so you say okay when i saw your study about i don't know say maternity, okay? Someone did something really, really deep. You can see that he was expressing something about the genocide and about what he lived, about all the, the thing. And then when you see the final work, you say, what happened? Everything is the same. You just do something for the tourist. What's, what's happening here? And they were like, yeah, this is not, uh, no, nobody's going to buy this. You have to do something, uh, you know, in the same thing. So I was like really <sighs> sad. Uh, because they <laughs> so approach I, art as a business or yeah, as a way to, Yeah, they were like, okay, yes. yeah, an artist don't get any money. So just do the same thing that uh, people buy here. Uh, tourists buy and don't don't be creative, please. See, be cre be creative at home, but here don't don't do anything. And uh, I followed a little bit this school, and I tried to get in, but it's a little bit closed. It's really really complicated to get there. So um, that's why I had this idea to make a school, a hard school, and I had some people helping me in Europe. But after that, um, I get in this school and all my energy <laughs> was focused <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah. So, and not for nothing, because actually um, Etienne Cruz now, um, and, and, and Etienne and me, we created a new um, ISBL and it's called the RSPEBE. Donc, euh, le réseau de soutien pédagogique so euh, network, des écoles belges à l'étranger. Yes, so it's a yes. network for Belgium schools. Uh, That's it. No guys. Oh no. No guys. Oh no. No need. Oh no. No free. So, 
yeah, yeah. because yeah. I understand um, that the the school a lot of the model is actually based on the the Belgian model, right? Yeah, yeah. I I I had to 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 do that because um, yeah, it's so big. The story is so big. <laughs> um, I take contact also to my uh, previous uh, director uh, from that school, and I was living there. It's, I I consider him like a, my my dad. Uh, his name is Patrick uh, de Wulf. Okay, and I contact him and said, okay, I I really want to to raise this school and to be really a, a reference for the the pl for the place. And we looked uh, about the the the, the teachers, uh, the, the the teaching levels, and we saw that Belgium level is just like the second or the third in the in the in the world. Yeah, in the ranking. So yeah. I said, yeah, it's it's easier for me because I'm Belgium. Then I have all my contact. And okay, what what asking more than that? I, I said, no, no. I have to do that. So the first person coming here was Patrick de Wolf. And he came to make the, for, uh, the uh, curriculum. Um, a formation. Yeah. yeah, the formation. Yeah. Did you say the formation? The, the curriculum, yeah, the, yes. Yes. Or the trainings. And we begin with him. The, the trainings, the trainings yeah, yes. The, the trainings for the teachers. Yeah. And everything was really refreshing because it was really different. We begin to see things in another way. He begins to talk about yes, the, the 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 brain is working like this, and and the the children have to 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 play. Don't forget that the children are spending like 20 years in that school. 20 years is so long. So if you're bored at the beginning, the rest is just like <sighs> you you don't do anything actually. Okay, so I cut you so, right here. I cut you right here, real quick. Uh, you talk about play and the importance of play. Um, mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit more about how do you apply uh, learning through play and how important it is in uh, the Soko, the Soko school? Okay. Um, first of all, the challenge was that the teacher had to understand that they had yes. to play with the children. And sometimes it's And the that was challenge. the big challenge because uh, the child, the, the, those teachers are coming from a system where they are not playing at, at school. It's just sitting and listening. So you have to, they, they were really open. They said, okay, we can do that, but where are the limits? Because when you're, you're playing with the children, they, they don't have limits. So when are we stopping the game? When are we um, doing this? You have to, to, to say to the children, no, no, it's too much now, stop, you know? And that's actually, till now, it's still a little bit... A challenge. Not really, yeah, yes, it's still a, a challenge. But um, yeah, we, we, we try, we, we bought a lot of uh, games. And uh, the wife of uh, Patrick de Wulf, Linda, uh, she was also there. She was all, she's also very creative. And she was there to make uh, some uh, teaching how to, uh, how to create this um, uh, material to play with the ch children. So what was really interesting that Patrick had a really good vision about what we need. So when he came, he was teaching the way we had to teach. Okay. So we had a really a good example in front of us. And she, he was explaining and giving all the, 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 the game that he created in the night. Actually, this guy just don't sleep. <laughs> <You know? laughs> he was living next to my home here. So sometimes the night I was watching if he was sleeping or not. And the light was always on, on. <laughs> really. This guy was not sleeping. He's like a robot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, but he did like two weeks and it was really intensive. And, but I, I was really happy about what happened. It was really interesting. And he did a, a good uh, rapport 
Mm-hmm. And that's Report. our base that we used with uh, Etienne Cruz to go on. And uh, like this, yeah, that's how. Yes. So Isoko um, is really a story of collaboration. Um, yeah, between really. So many people that contributed to that project from so many places. So many people that came and and for free. You know, you know when when you say people are coming here and doing that for free. Come on, you, you pay your 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 plane and okay, I had to to find somewhere how, where to live and to to give food. But they came for free and with a smile, you know, <laughs> really, really excited and really happy about it. And that's what I, I really loved about this experience. And when you, when you visit your school, actually, one thing that you can feel is uh, uh, the teachers and, and the kids and the smiles and, uh, and the, the, the Yeah, we begin, really, we begin to be like a family. Now, um, that's, that was actually my first um, challenge when I began to be a president. I wanted the, the um, teaching corp to be really, uh, really strong. And for that, they need to be really like a family, you know, connected and really... Um, uh, united? Yes, united, really. And that was my first thing. What, really, what, what was it so important for you um, to have this family and this unity? Uh, because a lot of time people think of education as oh, school, as just a space where people come and, and learn. But why was it so important for you to have that value of family? Yeah, because uh, where, where do you feel better if it's not your, in your family? See, when you come back to your home and see your mother and your father, see, that's actually the, the, the feeling. And what's important there is for some children, uh, they have nobody to talk with, you see, at home. I, I was a child like this. I, I, from, as from my three years, I was alone. I was uh, bring to a family and then the... Uh, interna, uh, how do you intern, say that? Intern, yes. Uh, intern, yes. So I had... Uh, uh, sorry, board no, school, board, board, boarding board school. Board school, yeah, okay. Yeah, I had no, no uh, references. Uh, and, uh, I, I had to create my family myself. And I did that till now. So um, actually, I wanted to... to sh- Show to the children that even if at home maybe you, you lost like your mother, maybe you lost your father, you still have a family. And we all are together. That's really important to be united and to help each other. And because actually uh, I, I, I read somewhere where they say, you know, uh, knowledge is the only thing that you can give and you stay with it. It's not like money. Money, you have money, you can give it, but then you stay with, you don't have, you have any less money. knowledge, okay? there's okay. more. Yeah. yeah, knowledge, you give it, and then it's more. And, but you stay with your knowledge, and the other guy have your knowledge, and maybe he, he will teach you something. And that's, yes, that's the base for me. It's really important, and that's what happened when Etienne Cruz came, and he teaches the teachers, he finished the day and he said, oh, actually, we are teaching you, but we are learning. We are learning a lot because there are things that you're doing that can help us. See? So, um, yeah, it was really something. It's, it's, it's like a next exchange. It's, not, it's no more like someone helping another. It's really an exchange. And they, they, they get so much from us and we get so much from them. And that's, yeah. No, that's that's what what uh, important in in life. Don't don't be uh, egoist in, about what you know. It's really really important to teach others, and 
when you see that the other are so so excited about learning see <laughs> that's the most beautiful thing um yeah. wow thank you What would you say is your 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 funniest anecdote or story that you've had um, since you've been uh, working at this school? Can you recall one story that is quite funny that happened with the children or the teachers? Oh, uh, <laughs> no. mm. oh yeah, I, I I have one. I have one. Okay, um, there were a teacher that um, that was my teacher before when I was a, a child. And she created also a school here in, uh, in Giseni. In, uh, and uh, oh, I, I, don't, I, want, I don't want to say the names because you don't actually... She don't, I don't, yeah. <laughs> and uh, um, she, she, she said, okay, I, I'm a specialist in um, Montessori, so I will come to teach your teachers. And uh, so you can, we can do a, a, a formation like this uh, together. It's going, it's going to be funny. So um, I said, yeah, not, not, why not? And I came to the school and I said, okay, there is this person coming and she's going to teach you about Montessori. And all the teacher was like, oh yeah, good, good. <laughs> and okay, I said, perfect. So I go to the, di the, the director and I said, okay, um, I think the old teachers are okay. And I'm going to invite that person to teach. And then I saw the di director just changing her, his face and I was like, what, uh, what happening? Uh, uh, is, is there a problem? He said, that person already came here and it was a disaster. <laughs> she's like, she's like, like a tyrant. <laughs> please don't call her <laughs> and i was like why they are not telling me why they are saying oh, yes and that's actually what you yeah. you you see the the problem in yeah. here in in africa yeah. so i go back to them and i say you know that person why <laughs> didn't say anything and they begin to to you know to be to laugh and say okay well <laughs> you didn't want to 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 stop your Ah, you're, you were so, so happy about it. So <laughs> we said, why not? <laughs> that is said, no. very wonderful. This is so yeah, wonderful. Yeah, they <laughs> don't say anything. Cultured, yes. They say, yes. <laughs> they don't <laughs> want to make know, you uncomfortable, you know, yes. No, you have to know that in you, Rwanda, yes. it's impolite. It's not polite yeah. to say no. <laughs> so they say yes to everything. Yeah. And that's the problem. <laughs> some, because sometimes they say yes, and then you come the day, the, the D-Day, And say, okay, we have to do what we said we have to do. And then the guy is not there. And that's the <laughs> way they say no. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and that's, yeah, that's a little bit, yeah, <laughs> a little wow. bit hard, but wow. okay. Okay. And tell us a little bit more to, about this new project. This is an exciting project about uh, building this new, build, building this new uh, school. Um, can you tell us a little bit uh, about it? <clears throat> Yeah, this is a big challenge. <laughs> this is a really big challenge because we have some um, uh, obligation mm -hmm. from from the, the the state here in yes. Rwanda, and um, yeah, it's it's a big challenge. <laughs> okay. So now, actually, what what happened here now? It's uh, I, I'm I'm the the second engineer. We have the first engineer yeah. supervisor. Yeah. Then we have the second one who is building, and then I'm the third one, because I'm buying everything and mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm supervising all the things. So it's really inspiring because uh, to 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 do a conception of a, a school and then you see it in the real. Yeah. It's so beautiful. It's like you you know you know you dream something and then you you create it. Nice. And <clears throat> um, um, yes, I'm so so happy about it. The challenge here is to get the money. Mm. 
because uh, we had uh, people giving money, but, uh, you know, uh, they give what they, they can give. And then um, we are three person yes. uh, doing the, the best of, uh, for, for doing the, I mean, to, to, to pay the, the, um, the building. The building yeah. and there is actually me mm-hmm. um, and my husband, yes. Mortaza Roshanali, and uh, my vice president, uh, Victor Mugaruka. And we are trying our best to send money and to pay the materials to build this school. Mm-hmm. And I hope it's going to be really, really a good school. It will. <laughs> and, I'm sure it will. The project is beautiful. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. What is your vision uh, for education and particularly uh, for the vision in Rwanda? Uh, what are your, hope, uh, your hopes and uh, what is your vision for the future? Well, uh, Rwanda is going really fast. It's growing and they begin a little bit to, 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 uh, to do the same system as in Belgium. Mm-hmm. With the competences and uh, and the the teaching the 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 same uh, methods mm-hmm. than Europe, they still have challenges because actually they need to 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 teach the teachers and to to create all the system. Um, they they are in good way, and um, for us it's it's like really. Interesting because uh, uh, what I really like also is to open the mind of mm. people, yeah. and <clears throat> that's what I'm doing with my teachers. And I think they really they were already open, and but sometimes we we bring new things, and to see their eyes with all the stars in it, <laughs> sometimes it's it's feeling so good. <laughs> and it's, it's so so good to to teach to people who want to 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 learn you see it, yeah. it's really hard to teach someone who doesn't want to mm. and but here they're they are really good willing mm. and that's the best thing that you can have with um with your your and friends and yeah. and family yeah, as <laughs> you can see yeah yes. really Yeah, one thing that I really like is uh, is the fact that yeah, it is very yes the you the teachers yes the students are coming and the children are coming with their different background, but your approach is very centered into okay if we want to have an impact on the kids, uh, we have to have an impact on the teachers. Uh, yeah, for them that's to the be beginning. able yes, it starts mm-hmm. with them because a lot of time. Yeah. Too much is put on on the children when the children they're really ready to learn, but do they mm-hmm. have the children, the teachers that have the right the approach? The teachers that yes. can do that, yeah. Yes. That's that's yeah. That's the challenge. And what would be yeah. the most inspiring story that you've had um, with children with the with the With the with the children, um, the most inspiring when when I saw that actually we were doing well. Mm-hmm. It's one day when uh, there there were a child coming uh, at school, um, and she was uh, a little bit hard in the family. Actually, uh, her mother just left her. Mm-hmm. And she was with uh, her father, and when uh, I saw myself, actually, um, not because my mother she didn't left me. It's I, I grew up alone, no. When she she came to me, and one day she she just hugs me and said, "Oh, um, Madam, you're my. I I would love to have you like my mother." See, so I was so, um, yeah. I said, yeah, that's that's what why I do that. I really need those children to find out what they miss at, at home, at school. To say, 
they, they have to see that there is no um, end. Uh, how, how do you say that? Um, uh, there, it's, not, it's not the end because you don't have a mother. Because I grew up like this. And for me, I just create my mother where I was. Uh, when I was in Europe, I, um, I begin to work. I have a really, really good friend of mine. Uh, her name is Bettina, Bettina de Graaf. And actually, till now, I'm <laughs> calling her my mother. <laughs> because she was so pregnant with me. And she was really, she's really a special person because she knew when I was doing really bad. And she knew that today, this girl, she's angry. She's angry. I'm going to give her foods, you know? But not like someone who is giving you for, by, by pity. Really like your mother, you know? And she, I was so feeling so, so nice with her. And that's an experience to say, uh, be, not because you don't have a mother. That means you don't have a mother. You can create your mother where you are. Yeah, in your you know? family. And yeah, your family. You create your family. Yeah. I noticed something also... Um... You talk about Bettina and the fact, the fact that she was aware um, of mm -hmm. what was going on through you. And I see that a lot in you and that in the school, that you are aware and you, you truly care about your students and their situation and their life. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about how seeing the students and the children as more than just students and seeing them as integral person that <coughs> are how important it is in, in, in the school. Yeah, yeah. For me, I, I'm not doing school because I want money or uh, I want to, to make benefits. I'm doing that because I, I really want children to, 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 to learn first and also to help, uh, you know. And um, as I told you, I'm, I'm someone who analyzes a lot. When I'm seeing someone... I will analyze him from up till down and I will have like my theory of, about <laughs> his life, you know? <laughs> so, and I'm really sensitive about um, the person. I will feel sometimes when he's sad or angry or, you know? So, uh, yes, it's the same for the children. And uh, I found out that here we miss that a lot, you know? And that's why at school we begin with uh, the, the, the Montessori and Celine Alvarez uh, yes, method that yes. we are beginning with talking with the children. Uh, what, what's, uh, what, how was your night? Did you do, do the, um, a nightmare? Um, what happened? What did you eat yesterday? And so they feel like they are talking with like a big brother or like a auntie. I have someone who is calling me Tanti, auntie. <laughs> When I'm teaching, it's like, auntie, please, auntie. That's what you so, want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want. So I, I'm, I'm happy about that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, really. Yes. So, yeah. Seeing them as integral <laughs> and creating that safe space. I think that's something that our audition, that our audience really uh, can really take away. Um, to create something that is just not, that is more than knowledge and the family in the safe yeah. space, the dialogues yeah. and, and the value. Um, what is your favorite uh, poem uh, or say in life in general? You can say it in, in any language you feel more comfortable, by the way. Yeah. Um... Uh, there is a, a, a phrase mm -hmm. that uh, uh, I used to, to read a lot. It's um, make. Uh, you can say it. Fais de ta vie, yes. Fais de ta vie un rêve et de tes rêves une réalité. Mm, that means uh, yeah. make your life a dream. And yes, and your, your dream, dream a rea reality. reality. Well, wow. Evelina Mello, once again, thanks yes. a lot. Thanks Thank a lot for so sharing much. your story. And uh, this was a beautiful Thank interview, you. my first uh, episode. <laughs> and I'm glad it was with you. So merci, merci beaucoup. Yes. 
and I'm uh, really you. looking forward. Uh, as you know, everyone, okay. you can um, you can connect with the ecolisoco.com. Uh, I will put the link in the description, and also you can connect with Evelina via social media uh, at Merlo Evelina on Instagram. Uh, and uh, yes, thank you very much. I'm glad thank that you to invite me. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, and hopefully we can continue this beautiful conversation. Oh, don't forget everyone, you can support the project by going on the website. There is a, a link to actually for you to actually uh, support uh, if you want to donate to uh, the new school project uh, or anything. So if you want to actually con con connect with the school and you have some knowledge or there's a lot of like teachers from international that comes there as well to learn because the methodology and the didactic it's so innovative and uh, modern that is applied there so don't hesitate mm -hmm. to contact the team uh, they are wonderful people wonderful fam family and evelina thanks you very much thank you thank very much. you thank you so much thank you thank you merci merci à toi <laughs>